Hey guys I'm Yuruzi. We have a new series. A Naruto x Gundam crossover. This is what if Naruto became a Gundam pilot, part 1. While alive, many believe that time will heal all wounds. In death, you will get the chance to meet all those that you love that have passed away before you did. For one man, neither of these sayings are true. This is his story. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and check the author in the description. Let's start. Chapter 1 What am I doing here, thought Naruto as he gazed up at the incredibly tall and imposing machine in front of him. It has been over 2000s years and here he was still alive and healthy as he was when he had been just a kid. He looked no older than 20 and had a body that most men would kill for though he wasn't bulky, but had a nice lean build. His sun-kissed blonde hair stuck up at all angles while his beautiful sky-blue eyes held little to no life in them. Living for as long as he had made him lose faith in all the things, he used to believe in. Countless battles, wars, killing, and other horrible acts had made him a cold and closed-off individual. The man who used to fight to protect his precious people and innocence no longer existed and all that was left was an empty shell. Captain Naruto, I see this is where you have been hiding, said Azrael with a smirk as he approached Naruto. Naruto turned to look at the man through his emotionless eyes. He took a good look at the blue cosmos leader and was unimpressed by what he saw. The man was of average height and wore a very expensive blue suit that matched his blue hair. From the way he walked and the smirk on his face, one could easily tell he was full of himself because of his money and position, but Naruto had no patience for men like him. Why are you here? Asked Naruto. Azrael couldn't stop the shiver that went down his spine as the man's emotionless eyes bore into his own. I have come down here to see you and the newest Gundam that was built. When I heard that the prototype used to design all other Gundams had been built I just couldn't resist the opportunity to see it, smirked Azrael as he stood next to Naruto then looked up at the Gundam that was in front of them both. I take it you were the one who requested I be the pilot of this Gundam, said Naruto knowingly. He should have known this man would request for him to personally to pilot this Gundam. Of course, you are the top pilot in the Earth Alliance having never been shot down and the only other person besides Lieutenant Mulaflaga to have been able to fight on equal grounds as the damn coordinators and their mobile suits, said Azrael with a small chuckle. HN, I hope you realize that I am not obligated to pilot this suit since I am part of a different branch of the Earth Alliance that you have no influence over, replied Naruto causing Azrael to narrow his eyes in anger. It was true, the Earth forces had their own elite organization that only took orders directly from the president so Azrael could not order Naruto to do anything. This branch was similar to Zaf's own faith members that only took orders from the chairman. I am aware of this fact, but I thought you might change your mind once you saw this new mobile suit. I heard from your superior that you were unsatisfied with the mobile suit given to you so I thought this might fit your tastes better. I mean, this mobile suit is what the five stolen Gundams, including the Strike, were all based off. I am sure with its capabilities you will be more than satisfied, grinned Azrael as he tried to lure the man into joining him. He was a fool to believe that Naruto didn't see through his underhanded manipulations, but he would learn his lesson eventually. I have heard the last four pilots that have attempted to pilot this suit have all gone mentally insane, said Naruto as he stared at the Gundam. Yes, well you see this Gundam has a built-in AI called the Zero System, which allows the pilot to interface directly with the unit's combat computer. Unfortunately, none of our previous pilots has been able to handle the mental strain from the information upload. I am sure you won't have a problem though, replied Azrael dismissively. What about the Buster Rifle? It doesn't look like a standard beam rifle to me, said Naruto already knowing what it was, but wanted to see if Azrael would tell him. Regretfully, if you choose to pilot this Gundam you won't be allowed to use the Buster Rifle at full power because it would be breaching the treaty we have with those damn coordinators about not resorting to nuclear-powered weapons, frowned Azrael to show he was clearly upset with that fact. This Gundam has a nuclear core or something to that effect so aren't you already breaching the agreement when you had this unit built, replied Naruto. Not really but it is running off energy similar to that to nuclear power. That is why you can't use the prototype buster rifle at full power because those idiots will think it is a nuclear-powered weapon because of the damage it can do at full power and accuse us of breaching our agreement, shrugged Azrael as he had a glint in his eyes to show he really didn't care if he breached the treaty in some way. What will my targets be? Asked Naruto causing Azrael to smile in victory. We will be heading to ORB to see if they will join us so that we can use their mass driver and if they don't agree then we will be forced to use lethal force. 
Their nation is too much of a threat for us to continue to let them go unchecked like they have been, said Azrael, but Naruto could tell he just wanted an excuse to see this new Gundam in battle. I work alone so I don't want to have to deal with any of those other pilots of yours because they will just get in my way, said Naruto causing Azrael to grit his teeth in anger. The Blue Cosmos leader clearly didn't like having to cave to the demands of others, but knew he didn't have much of a choice if he wanted to gain Naruto's help. Fine, but you better not fail, demanded Azrael, but took a step back in fear when Naruto's eyes narrowed upon him. In two days I will be ready to test the unit's fighting capabilities so have the Forbidden and Raider here by then. In order to test out the true capabilities of this Gundam I will need to fight against other Gundams, said Naruto. Hmm, that sounds like an excellent idea and it will allow me to see what those other units are capable as well. I will have them transferred here immediately then once you are done testing the Gundam we can head to ORB, smiled Azrael. By the way, the name of this Gundam is Wing Zero, but feel free to change it if you want, shrugged Azrael before taking his leave. Wing Zero, muttered Naruto as he went back to staring at the Gundam. If his friends and family could see him now they would probably be extremely disappointed in him since he was taking orders from a man no different than Orochimaru. Looks exactly like it does from Gundam Wing, but not Endless Waltz. Break. Captain Wilson had served in the military his entire life, which was reflected in his lifestyle and attitude. He was known to be a strict man and despite him being slightly short in stature, he had an air about him that people seemed to fear and respect. If there was one thing he hated it was insubordination, but as of lately he had been questioning the military's actions, especially after what happened in Alaska once he received word about the higher-ups activating a cyclops system. It seemed as if both sides were aiming for total genocide of the other and if it kept up things would get completely out of control. On top of that, he had to put up with one of the most arrogant and spoiled brats he ever had the displeasure of meeting, Lord Azrael, leader of Blue Cosmos. The man was seriously getting on his nerves with his cocky attitude, but there was little he could do since the man outranked him. He would have continued to curse the man, but his thoughts were interrupted when the person he was waiting for arrived on the bridge of his carrier. Captain Uzumaki, it is good to see you again, said Captain Wilson as he nodded at the man. Naruto Uzumaki was probably the man he respected more than anyone else because even though the man was extremely cold and distant, he was someone you could count on in a tight spot. The man had saved his and many others' lives countless times in battle, which is one of the reason most people looked up to him. Captain Wilson, you wish to speak with me? Asked Naruto with the same emotionless look in his eyes that he always had. The young man never showed any emotion and was always so cold that it made Captain Wilson along with many others wonder what happened to him in his past. Whatever happened to him most have horrible because nothing ever affected the man. Yes, I wanted to tell you that those three special mobile suits of Lord Azrael have arrived and I was to inform you that you will be having a test run against the Forbidden and Raider at 1400 hours, said Captain Wilson calmly. Hmm, it would be best if you keep at least a few miles away during the fight at all times. From the reports I have read on those pilots they don't care much for exercising restraint even while allies are around, said Naruto with a slight frown before his face became neutral again. I was not aware of that, but it doesn't surprise me that these pilots of Azrael are uncontrollable since the man believes he is better than everyone else, frowned Captain Wilson. He wasn't worried about Naruto reporting him for bad-mouthing his higher-ups because the man didn't really care what people said and didn't waste his time on such trivial matters. I would think you would be more worried about fighting against them. If they are as reckless as you say then I doubt they will hold back against you even if it is a spar, said Captain Wilson as he looked at Naruto curiously. They won't hold back, I have no doubt that Azrael told them to go all out against me, replied Naruto. I take it you aren't bothered by this fact? said Captain Wilson with a knowing smirk. No, because it is only way I will be able to truly test the capabilities of Wing Zero, answered Naruto. I am starting to believe what others say about you being suicidal, smirked Captain Wilson. If only dying was so easy, mumbled Naruto with a glazed look in his eyes. Captain Wilson heard what Naruto mumbled and gave him a strange look. He had never met a pilot who wanted to die, but then again he had never met anyone who he could say was similar to Naruto. Good luck and I look forward to see you making fools of Azrael's men, chuckled Captain Wilson. Naruto just nodded his head at the man before taking his leave since he needed to be prepared for his fight. Hanger. I still can't believe we are wasting our time fighting against some rookie pilot and his new mobile suit when we could be doing better stuff, scowled Clotho as he started up his mobile suit. Who cares, just so long as this pilot proves a challenge before we kill him then it doesn't matter who it is, smirked Shunny as he got into his mobile suit. 
They didn't get to say anything more when Azrael appeared on their screen with his ever-constant smirk. Now remember boys, I don't want you to hold back because I want to see if this new mobile suit is as powerful as it looks or it was just a waste of money, said Azrael before cutting his connection with them. Let's do this, laughed Shunny as the sides of the carrier opened up. Clotho and Shunny both recognized a small blip on their radar and realized their new opponent was already waiting for them so took off at full speeds towards their target. It wasn't long before both pilots reached their intended target as it calmly waited for them while floating in the air. This is it, I knew this would be a waste of time, growled Clotho as he prepared to draw his main weapon, which was a large spiked ball that could crush opposing enemy warship and carriers. Let's see how long this mobile suit can last, laughed Shunny before drawing his large scythe and charging right at the Gundam. Clotho wasn't about to let him have all this so drew his beam rifle and started to fire at the unknown mobile suit. Show me your power wing zero, thought Naruto as he went into action and dodged the beam shots while charging at the forbidden. You're dead, laughed Shunny as he swung his scythe downward, but his eyes narrowed in anger when wing zero used its shield to block it before he could complete his swing. Foolish, muttered Naruto as he delivered a right kick to Forbidden's chest that knocked it away. He was about to continue his assault, but was forced to dodge right as a large spiked ball passed through the space he was just occupying. Damn he's fast, cursed Clotho as his weapon retracted back to its original length and he started to shoot at Wing Zero. Wing Zero easily dodged the shots, but was soon put on the defensive when the Forbidden started its attack upon it again. The Forbidden transformed into its close combat mode where it had now two large green panels protecting the upper arms and these two large black things were coming out of each side of the chest. Naruto was almost caught off guard when the Forbidden fired its beam weapon and watched, as it seemed to bend in a curve. He didn't get much time to think of a counter as a large spiked ball was headed straight for his cockpit. Die bastard, yelled Clotho, but his eyes widened in shock as Zero quickly drew a beam saber from its right wing and used it to destroy his weapon. Zero then raised its shield and started to fire upon the Forbidden, but the beams from its buster rifle were just deflected by those large green panels. Ha, laughed Shunny as he charged in and tried to cut Zero in half with his scythe. Naruto managed to dodge out of the way in time, but quickly raised his shield to the right to deflect the beams fired at him from the raider. The raider started to fire upon Zero relentlessly without allowing it any room to counter, while the Forbidden started fire its own special beam at Zero. You'll pay for destroying my weapon, growled Clotho as he transformed into his mobile armor and started to use the two plasma cannons to fire upon Zero. HN, thought Naruto as he was forced on the ropes. He wasn't able to get close enough to use his beam saber against the Forbidden because the raider kept firing upon him. The Forbidden and raider were doing a good job at keeping him from mounting an offensive attack, but his luck was just about to change. It's all over, smirked Clotho as he had Zero in his sights, but right as he was about to fire he was forced to dodge to the side as Shunny's own beam almost hit him. What the hell Shunny? Watch where you are shooting, yelled Clotho angrily. Shunny just continued laughing and completely ignored Clotho as he continued his assault upon Naruto. Naruto's eyes narrowed in anger as he saw the forbidden attack his own ally and didn't even seem to be bothered by it. He may have changed greatly over the centuries, but seeing someone attack their own teammates still brought up bad memories with him. It was after seeing that he finally decided to try out the Zero system. Die, screamed Shunny in glee as he was about to cut Wing Zero in half, but it did a backflip at the last second to dodge the attack. The Forbidden was about to fire its special beam, but couldn't as Zero fired a couple of shots at him with its buster rifle. Shunny smirked as he deflected the shots, but that second he paused to do that action was a huge mistake because two machine gun armaments came out of the shoulders of Wing Zero and fired at his deflectors. The deflectors were designed to deflect particle or plasma blasts and not shells so they were completely destroyed. Ah! Screamed Shunny as his deflectors were destroyed and then before he could react he received a powerful kick in the chest from the Zero that sent him crashing into the water below. You forgot about me bastard, grinned Clotho as he came up behind the Zero, but his eyes widened in horror as it ducked under him and used its beam saber damage its right plasma cannon. With one of its plasma cannons damaged, the raider transformed back into mobile suit form and started to fire at Wing Zero with its beam rifle. Wing Zero used its superior speed to dodge all the shots with ease and it even looked like it was predicting where raider was going to fire at next because no movement was wasted. This can't be happening, gasped Clotho in fear, as Wing Zero was soon right in front of him with its beam saber raised above his head. Naruto was about to merely disable the raider like he did the forbidden, but he was forced to use both of Zero's legs and kick off the raider right before a familiar particle beam passed through the space both Gundams were occupying a second ago. 
You are going to die for what you did, bastard, screamed Shunny as his eyes showed unconcealed rage. He started to fire recklessly at Naruto and if he didn't stop he would end up killing his own partner who had barely dodged the last shot. Stop moving, yelled Shunny hysterically. What he didn't know was that Naruto had had enough of him. Naruto quickly discarded his beam saber and drew his buster rifle from out of his shield. He aimed right at the Forbidden's cockpit before firing two shots at the Gundam, but it merely used its thrusters to go right above the shots. Ha, ha you missed Ash, started Shunny before his eyes widened in horror as a third shot came at him from inside the shield. He didn't even get a chance to scream as the shot tore right through his cockpit and obliterated him. The Forbidden floated in air for a second with a hole right through the chest before exploding in a shower of debris. HN, said Naruto emotionlessly before raising his left arm to show a second buster rifle in the shield. He then brought both halves of the rifle together to form one large rifle that he now held in his right hand while his shield remained in his left. Shunny, spluttered Clotho with wide eyes, but didn't get to say more on the matter when Azrael appeared on his screen and ordered him to return to the ship right away. Break. Naruto slowly came out of his cockpit and used the grappling line to get to the ground. He hit the ground and looked up to see Azrael and Captain Wilson waiting for him. Azrael had a look of glee on his face, which was surprising because most would think he would be upset that he lost one of his new mobile suits. That was absolutely incredible, it seems Wing Zero is more powerful than I originally thought especially with you as the pilot, smiled Azrael, as he knew now they had the perfect weapon to destroy the coordinators. One would think you would be upset at losing a pilot and one of our newest mobile suits, said Captain Wilson as he hid his distaste of the man by keeping his face neutral. Sacrifices must be made if we are to win this war against those damn coordinators and it is clear this mobile suit will help us reach that goal. I can't wait to see it in a real battle so have it prepared to be transferred to one of our ships that will be heading to ORB, shrugged Azrael. Captain Wilson was disgusted at how little the man valued life, but kept his opinions to himself like a good soldier. Naruto wasn't listening to either man as his thoughts and eyes were focused on Wing Zero. He was forced to use the Zero system to defeat the Forbidden and Raider, which was an interesting experience. It was clear now why all others who had tried to use the Zero system before him had gone insane from it. All the information flooding one's mind would drive anyone crazy, but due to Naruto having been used to receiving tons of information at once, he was able to prevent himself from losing his mind from all the data. No, what truly had him so focused on the Wing Zero was the strange vision he had received from the Gundam before he deactivated the Zero system. It was strange because he saw himself standing on a beach as he watched those around him having fun. He had a smile on his face while he watched everything because the world seemed to be in a state of peace. No such thing as peace, thought Naruto with a hint of anger as he dismissed the vision as nothing, but a hallucination. He knew better than anyone that peace never lasted long because something always occurred to bring about death and destruction. It was inevitable and nothing could stop the endless cycle because he had already tried and failed countless times. Hoping for such things only left him with pain because no matter what he did countless loved ones and friends would all eventually end up dying. This was the hard truth Naruto had come to accept long ago, which is why he no longer cared what side he fought for so long as he was put into battle to fight where death was possible. The only dream he had was to one day be killed on the battlefield so he could at least die with some honor since the rest of his dignity had been lost centuries ago. ORB Lord Izumi, do you really believe that the Earth Alliance will attack you all if you don't agree to ally with them and meet their demands? Asked Kira. It pains me to say this, but there is no doubt in my mind they will attack us if we don't agree to their terms. They just lost Panama two days ago and now ZFT controls all the mass drivers on Earth besides ours. This is the real reason they are attacking us, replied Lord Izumi calmly. It's so stupid, yelled Kigali angrily. Yeah, but after what happened in Alaska, I am no longer surprised by their actions, said Mu with a shake of his head. I can't believe they would go so far as to attack a neutral nation just because you all refuse to meet their ridiculous demands, sighed Moreau. What will you do? Asked Kira though he already knew the answer to that question. I will refuse to meet their demands and have the people of ORB start to evacuate immediately. If ORB doesn't stick to its ideals then we become no different than the Earth Alliance or ZFT, answered Lord Izumi firmly. Well if that's the case, then I would like to offer you my aid along with the Archangel. It is the least we can do for all your hospitality, said Moreau with a small smile. Count me in too since I'm not too happy with the Earth Alliance's actions of lately either, smirked Mu. Thank you, ORB and I, greatly appreciate you lending us your strength in our time of need, said Lord Izumi gratefully. 
Earth Alliance. We have reached the borders of ORB sir, said the captain as he turned to look at Azrael who was sitting in a chair with a smug grin on his face. Perfect, have we received a reply from them yet? Asked Azrael before taking a sip of wine from the glass in his hand. Yes sir, it seems they refuse to meet our requests by saying that they are neutral and will not join either side, replied the captain as he read the message they received. Haha, I must hand it to Lord Izumi, he sure is a stubborn man, but I am glad because I wanted to get a chance to see what our newest weapon could truly do in battle. Begin our attack on them captain and let's see if their foolish ideals can stand up against our power, chuckled Azrael. Yes sir, saluted the captain before ordering all ships in their fleet to started their attack upon ORB. Naruto. Naruto sat in the cockpit of Wing Zero with his eyes closed and only the light sounds of his breathing could be heard. He knew the battle had started as his advanced hearing could pick up the many sounds of battle outside, but he calmly remained sitting in the dark. The immortal man had lived so long that the sounds of battle no longer fazed him in any way. In fact, what is worse was that the sound seemed to comfort him, as they were one of the few things that had remained constant in his long life. What a dreadful thing to be able to feel most comfortable when humanity was engaged in a life or death struggle. Captain Uzumaki you are cleared to launch, said a tech over the intercom causing the man's eyes to open slowly as his machine came to life. The darkness that he enjoyed so much started to slowly disappear as light slowly bled into his cockpit and showed him the massive battle that was occurring. Wing Zero launching, said Naruto as he launched off the panel before transforming in mid-air into his mobile armor mode. He then took off at high speeds towards the front line of the battle. Battle. The Archangel was on the front lines along with the rest of ORB fleet while the Freedom and Strike helped take out the enemies on the mainland. Fire the main cannons, ordered Captain Ramius as she kept her eyes on the battle and tried to keep her crew alive. Captain, I just got reading of four high-powered plasma blasts heading towards, said Sai with a hint of fear. Evade, yelled Captain Ramius just in time. A plasma blast passed right through the space they were right in, but the three small ships near them weren't so lucky and were completely destroyed. What the hell could have done that? Gasped Maru with wide eyes before they hardened, as she needed to stay focused as the battle was still going on. Ma'am, we have unknown entity approaching, but it seems to give off the same reading as a mobile armor, said Mirialia before bring up the picture on the screen. Captain Ramius's eyes narrowed as she looked at the mobile armor, but soon ordered for evasive measures as it started to fire upon them. Several of the shots came real close to hitting the ship and caused the crew to grip their chairs as the ship shook from the explosions. No way, it is a mobile suit, yelled Sai as he watched it transform and took aim directly at the bridge. The crew's eyes widened in shock as it raised its shield and fired at them, but they sighed in relief when Freedom appeared in front of them and deflected the blast using its shield. I will deal with this new mobile suit so you all focus on those carriers, announced Kira before engaging the new mobile suit. Zero versus Freedom The Freedom used the two plasma cannons mounted on its shoulders and the rail cannons on its hips to fire at the new mobile suit, but it dodged the blasts before they could hit. Kira was then forced to dodge several shots that came at him from the unknown mobile suit. Have to watch that rifle that is hidden under his shield, thought Kira as he used his beam rifle to fire upon Zero. Wing Zero used its shield to easily deflect the beams before using its right hand to draw the beam saber mounted in its left wing structure. Freedom seeing his enemy draw a beam saber drew his own and both Gundams engaged in a fierce close combat fight. Impressive, thought Naruto as they crossed blades and the two fought for dominance. The plasma cannons mounted on Freedom's wings came up and started to take aim at Zero, but sensing the danger Naruto increased his thrust and pushed the Freedom away before raising its shields to block the blasts. Freedom used that moment of distraction to get in close and make a move to remove Zero's left arm. Zero turned its head and started to fire at the Freedom using the guns mounted on each side of its head forcing the Freedom off course when it dodged the shots. Naruto then started to fire a few shots at the Freedom, but it used its own shield to block them before returning fire with its beam rifle. The two Gundams fired shots at each other as they circled one another before Zero came in close at incredible speeds. Fast, cursed Kira as he barely raised his shield in time to block the beam saber, but that seemed to be exactly what Naruto wanted as he slammed his shield into Freedom's head. Zero was about to end the match, but was forced to raise its shield in defense when the rail cannons on Freedom's hips opened fire upon it. This gave Freedom enough time to recover and charge right at Zero ready to take off its shield arm. Zero blocked the strike with its shield, but that was exactly what Kira wanted as he prepared to fire its plasma cannons at point black. 
Naruto was impressed the boy had used his own tactic against him, but wasn't about to die that easily and finally used the machine guns hidden in the shoulders of Zero. Kira eyes widened in shock and barely managed to disengage in time before both his plasma cannons were taken out. Time to finish this, said Naruto as he gave Kira no time to catch his balance and tossed away his beam saber before taking his buster rifle out of the shield and firing two shots at freedom. The freedom turned its thrusters to max and the shots sailed right under it as its plasma and rail cannons were about to take aim. Like when Naruto faced the forbidden, the pilot didn't know his rifle could split in two and was unprepared for the third shot that came from the shield. Kira's eyes widened in horror as he saw the plasma blast heading straight for him and knew he wouldn't be able to dodge in time. Someone must like him though because a red mobile suit appeared in front of him and deflected the blast with its own shield. Naruto's eyes narrowed as he eyed the new Gundam that had showed up as he floated in front of both of them in his wing zero. This new Gundam looked to be especially built for close combat as Naruto saw multiple beam saber handles. Thanks, said Kira, but was surprised when a familiar face appeared on his screen. I am here to help you, said the boy as Kira's eyes widened in shock. A thrun? Gasped Kira as he stared at his childhood friend. We need to talk, but not right now. Right now we have more important matters to deal with, said Athrun as he was referring to the mobile suit that flying directly in front of them. Right, agreed Kira as his eyes hardened as he prepared to fight next to Athrun to take out this new mobile suit that was able to match the abilities of his own. The justice and freedom dodged to the side as Zero started to fire upon them both using both halves of its buster rifle to do so. Athrun quickly drew his twin beam sabers and connected them to form one large beam before charging at Naruto. Zero dodged the Justice's strike, but that seemed to be their plan as he came under direct fire from the Freedom's plasma and rail cannons. Naruto managed to raise his shield just in time, but lost the right half of his buster rifle in the Freedom's blasts. He quickly jettisoned the second beam saber from the right wing mount and caught it firmly his right hand before activating it in time to parry the Justice's blow. These two seem to work well together, muttered Naruto as he was completely on the defensive for the past two minutes. The only thing that was saving his life was his lightning-fast reflexes and Zero's incredible speed. He couldn't keep this up for much longer or he would be destroyed. Luckily, the Earth Alliance signaled a retreat, which caused the justice and freedom to stop their assault on him. We'll meet again, thought Naruto before transforming into his mobile armor and taking off back to his ship. Athrun and Kira just watched him go with looks of apprehension in their eyes because that man had just fought against them both and managed to hold his own. Anyone who could fight against their two Gundams at once without any help was something to watch out for in the future. Break. I can't believe you spent the entire battling fighting some unknown mobile suit, yelled Azrael unhappily. It was no ordinary mobile suit, it was able to keep up with Zero with little difficulty and had incredible firepower at its disposal. There was also a second suit that showed up that was almost able to match my own suit in speed, said Naruto not in the least bit intimidated by the man. Interesting, to think that there are two suits out there able to keep up with your mobile suit is nothing short of amazing. I wonder if it was ORB who built them or someone else, muttered Azrael thoughtfully. Captain Uzumaki, the repairs to your Gundam will be done shortly, saluted a tech before Naruto dismissed him with a nod of his head. I want you to capture one of these new mobile suits, but it doesn't matter which one. If you can't then destroy them, but make sure you don't completely destroy them so we have something to salvage, grinned Azrael before leaving the hangar. ORB. Kira and Athrun were sitting next to each other as they had just finished talking with one another and had finally reconciled about everything that had happened between them. Even though the two were now friends again they didn't seem too happy because they each had a solemn look on their face even after Kigali had hugged them when they had finally made up. Why the long faces? One would think you would be happy now that you have settled everything between you two, said Mu with a smirk. In the battle today, we faced a new Earth Alliance mobile suit and whoever was piloting it was extremely good, said Kira with a slight frown. He was able to hold us both off without taking any real damage, said Athrun causing Mu to raise his eyebrow because he knew how good the two kids were. If I were you I would take this time to rest since the Earth forces are still out there and will probably attack again real soon. You will need all the rest you can get if this new mobile suit and pilot are as good as you say, said Mu seriously. Kira and Athrun seemed to relax a bit after hearing that because he was right and they would need all their strength if they met that pilot again. Break. I think it is time to finish this useless nation off, said Azrael with a smirk as the captain looked at him in surprise. Sir. Replied the captain. 
I want you to give the order to attack and this time I want this stupid nation and its foolish ideals to burn to the ground, ordered Azrael. Yes sir, said the captain before relaying the orders. The earth forces was again started to deploy their weapons against the nation of ORB. They didn't even try to negotiate with them even though ORB had been sending them constant messages, which Azrael didn't bother to answer. Battle. Where are you two, thought Naruto as he fired upon two more ORB ships before flying off, not even bothering to watch as they were destroyed. He was just about to head down towards the ground to help push back the ORB forces when he dodged to the side in order to avoid being hit by multiple blasts that came at him from the Freedom. Naruto returned a couple shots at the Freedom before quickly jettisoning the Beam Saber in the right wing. He caught the Beam Saber, activated it, and raised it above his head all in one quick motion as he crossed beams with the Justice that had tried to come at him from above. The Zero pulled back and let momentum carry the Justice past him before going to kick him the back, but was caught off guard when fate impact that was usually attached to Justice's back hit him right in the stomach. The Freedom appeared on the far right side of Zero and fired all its weapon upon the mobile suit. Naruto thinking quickly grabbed the Fatem Pack before it got out of the way and used it as a makeshift shield to protect it from the full brunt of Freedom's attack. His plan worked and he quickly threw the pack away from him just as it exploded in a shower of debris. I have no choice, their teamwork has gotten even better, thought Naruto before activating the Zero system and information instantly started to flood his mind. Come on Kira, said Ithran as he drew his twin beam sabers and charged at Wing Zero with the intent of finishing this fight quickly. Kira just nodded his head before taking aim and firing again at Zero so that if it dodged it would be in the perfect spot for Ithran to engage it. Zero dodged the shots just like Kira and Ithran planned, but just as Justice was about to take off its right arm, but Zero caught Justice's arm in his right hand while its back was to the Justice. Ithran's eyes widened in shock before he groaned in pain as Zero's left elbow slammed into his head and forced him to lose his grip on his beam saber. The freedom was coming at Zero from the front while it was still holding the Justice's right arm, but barely got out of the way in time as Zero started to fire upon it using the beam rifle in its shield, which was in its left hand. While Freedom was veered off course, Zero lifted its legs before slamming them into Justice's chest and then pushed off the mobile suit at amazing speeds. Kira barely had any time to respond as it moved back just in time to avoid being cut in half, but its shield was caught in the swipe and was cut in half. Zero inclined its head slightly and started to fire right at Freedom's rail cannons, which it managed to destroy the one on the left hip before turning around to block the shots fired at him from the now recovered Justice. Kira we need to do something or he is going to get by us, panted Athrun as he barely dodged the beam strike from Zero, but wasn't able to dodge the spinning kick to his chest. I know, said Kira as he went down to help Athrun out, but both boys stopped when they received a signal from the Archangel to pull back. They were surprised when they noticed that Zero had stopped attacking them just as they received the signal. A second later, a man with sun-kissed blonde hair and cold blue eyes appeared on their screen. You allowed me to retreat so I am returning the favor, but next time we meet I will not stop, said the man before closing the link. Athrun and Kira watched in surprise as the Zero transformed into its mobile armor form and went down to help the rest of its forces break through the last line of defense. Let's go Athrun, this retreat is an order from Lord Izumi himself so it must be important, said Kira before taking off towards the meeting area. Athrun just nodded his head before following his friend. Break. I can't believe that old fool destroyed the mass driver, yelled Azrael in anger. They had managed to take over ORB, but it was pointless now that the mass driver was gone since that was the main reason for attacking it. We have been ordered to head over to Victoria and help with the operation to reacquire the mass driver there, said the captain. Hmm, very well. I guess it doesn't matter so long as we acquire a mass driver besides we did finally get to destroy this foolish nation and that is good enough for me, shrugged Azrael as he calmed down and smoothed out his expensive suit. Let us be on our way then because I wish to get to space as soon as possible so I may acquire those one of those spectacular new mobile suits, smirked Azrael. Yes sir, said the captain before ordering all ships to turn around and make haste to Victoria. Chairman of Plants Chairman, it seems the Earth forces were successful in reacquiring Victoria and have launched a large amount of their forces into outer space, said Commander Rao. Hmm, that is nothing new since we already knew they would probably get Victoria back, but what I want to know is if there has been any word from Athrun, said Chairman Zala as he turned to look at Rao. I am afraid not sir, but you did give him a highly classified mission. He is probably afraid to contact anyone in fear that the transmission will be intercepted, said Rao as he inwardly smirked. Everything was going according to his plan and soon humanity would be judged properly. 
I want you to keep an eye out for him and continue to try to contact him then report back to me immediately. Is that understood commander? Ordered Chairman Zala. Yes sir, I will contact you immediately if I hear any word from him at all, bowed Rao before leaving the man's office. Victoria. So this is the new ship that has been built, impressive, said Azrael with that cocky smile of his. Naruto quietly followed besides the general and Azrael as he observed the new ship of the Earth Alliance. It was designed after the Archangel and has many of the same capabilities and the person assigned to captain of this ship even used to be part of the Archangel before it turned traitor, said the general as they boarded the ship to find several members of the crew waiting for them in a military fashion. A beautiful woman with short purple hair and exotic purple eyes stepped forward and saluted the trio. Lord Azrael, Captain Uzumaki, I would like to introduce you to Captain Natarl Bajarul, said the general. Natarl was surprised to learn that the leader of Blue Cosmos would be aboard the Dominion, but was in shock to see the legendary ace pilot Uzumaki Naruto in front of her as was the rest of the crew that was there at the time. It is an honor to have you both aboard the Dominion, said Natarl as she glanced at Naruto, and noticed him nod his head at her. She swallowed nervously as she saw how cold and lifeless his eyes were, but her attention was diverted when Azrael made some perverted comment. Wow, is having a beautiful captain an added bonus of being aboard this ship? smirked Azrael as he checked out Natarl without an ounce of shame. The woman wanted to scowl at him, but knew she would be reprimanded for it so kept her face neutral. I assure you Lord Azrael that Captain Badrul comes from a long military line and she is perfectly capable of leading this ship. She knows firsthand all its capabilities since she was part of the Archangel before she was transferred, said the general firmly. Oh good, because we will be hunting the Archangel, said Azrael to the surprise of Natarl since she thought the Archangel had been destroyed at the Alaska base. Sir? Asked Natarl as she turned to look at the general. Oh you don't know that the Archangel survived the Alaska base incident? We even had the pleasure of fighting against them when we went to ORB before they managed to escape, smiled Azrael. If you don't mind captain, I would like a tour of this ship after I settle in, said Naruto as he interrupted Azrael and his constant rambling. Of course, I would be honored to show you around. Would you like a tour as well Lord Azrael? Replied Natarl. No I am fine, I am just going to get a nap after making sure all my effects have been brought aboard, declined Azrael. I will be ready in an hour for that tour after I am shown to my room, said Naruto. Yes sir, I will have one of my crew escort you to your room, said Natarl before assigning one of the current crew members to do it. Naruto nodded his head at her before following the person assigned to show him to his room. Break. Not many things could faze Natarl, as she was a no-nonsense woman and did as she was ordered while expecting others to do the same. She could honestly say that no one other than her father had ever intimidated her, but here she was walking next to a man that was a living legend among the Earth forces and she was nervous as can be. It was only supposed to be a simple tour of the ship, but already ten minutes into the tour, she couldn't stop herself from staring into his eyes, which were as cold as ice. He was so much younger than she would have thought yet his eyes told a different story. Am I making you uncomfortable? Asked Naruto as he stopped walking and broke the beautiful woman out of her thoughts. No, I am sorry, but I just couldn't believe how young you are, blushed Natarl before recomposing herself. Don't let my looks deceive you, I am older, then I look, said Naruto as he gazed into the woman's eyes. She couldn't stop the shiver that went down her spine as those beautiful yet cold blue eyes stared into her own and seemed to be looking into her very soul. I am sorry if I offended you, I won't let it happen again, said Natarl firmly. I heard you were once aboard the Archangel, said Naruto as he started a conversation with the woman after walking together for a few moments in silence. He didn't know why he felt this urge to speak, but would worry about it later. Yes sir, replied Natarl as she looked at him curiously. Before he didn't want to talk at all, but now it seemed to be the exact opposite. Will you be able to shoot them down? Asked Naruto causing Natarl to stumble slightly, but not enough for him to take notice. What do you mean sir? Asked Natarl confused. If you were truly aboard the Archangel until Alaska then you must have known the crew and people on it quite well. Will you be able to shoot down the ship carrying a bunch of people you spent several months with? Explained Naruto causing Natarl eyes to narrow in thought before replying. I will do my duty as I am told, you do not need to worry about that sir, said Natarl with a hard look in her eyes. I see, said Naruto with a hint of disappointment that Natarl managed to pick up. Why did he care if she could shoot down a bunch of traitors even if they were old crew members of hers? He had given up caring a long time ago so why was this affecting him? 
Could it be those visions from Wing Zero that now involved his past were actually affecting him? Forgive me sir, but you seem upset with my answer, why is that? Said Natarl as she hoped he wouldn't reprimand her. I am not upset, but merely slightly surprised because I don't think I could do it, answered Naruto. You don't think you would be able to shoot down a bunch of traitors? Replied Natarl surprised. Not if I knew them on a personal level like you do, said Naruto causing Natarl's eyes to widen before she looked down at the ground. What the hell was he talking about? He had been the one to kill Sasuke and that was somebody he considered a brother. Why was he starting to care all of a sudden? This was not good because he had stopped getting close to people centuries ago so he wouldn't have to worry about the pain of losing someone he cared for. I may know them, but my responsibility to the military comes first before any personal attachments I may have, said Natarl, but Naruto could hear the slight hesitation. A part of her obviously thought otherwise, but he wasn't going to say anything because he had spoken enough. He just nodded his head and gestured for Natarl to continue with the tour as the conversation was over. Outer Space, Abandoned Colony L4 Well looks like we now have three ships and two of which are stolen with one wanted by ZFT and the other by the Earth Alliance. We sure do now how to get into tough situations, said Mu with a smirk. I agree with you there, but what is life without a little excitement? Smirked Andrew Waltfeld as he drank some coffee while sitting down in his chair. The question is what we do now? Said Kira causing everyone to think about that question. It is my hope that these three ships will be able to end this war and finally bring about peace, said Lakis. Hmm, that sure is one hell of a goal to accomplish with just three ships, chuckled Mu as he leaned against the wall with his arms behind his head. I would be glad to help you achieve peace, but how do you propose we go about doing it since we aren't very liked by many, said Moro as she stood next to Mu. I hate to say it, but so long as my father is chairman I don't think there will ever be peace between the plants and earth, frowned Athrun as Kigali looked up at him with a sad look in her eyes. Not only that, but no way Lord Azrael will ever agree to a peace treaty with the plants when he wouldn't even negotiate with ORB, said Kigali as her eyes burned unconcealed hate for the man responsible for leading the attack against ORB. Honestly, I am more worried about that new mobile suit the kid was talking about earlier. I mean, anyone who is able to take out both the freedom and justice is a major threat, said Andrew, which everyone agreed to. It doesn't make any sense, we were clearly winning against him, but then in an instant he was able to take us out without any problems, said Athrun confused. I think the pilot of that Gundam may not be as much of a threat as you might believe since Kira and Athrun did say he let them go instead of continuing to fight when he had the upper hand, pointed out Lakis. Any chance you got a good look at the man? Could be useful in the future if we know what he looks like, said Lediner, Kigali's personal bodyguard. Yeah, um, he had spiky blonde hair and sky blue eyes, offered Kira causing Mu to tense, which Maru noticed. Mu? Asked Maru curiously causing everyone to look at the man. Tell me, when he spoke to you, did he show any emotion at all? Asked Mu as everyone looked at him strangely. Air, no, actually, now that I think about it, his eyes were extremely cold and lifeless, said Athron thoughtfully. This is not good, said Mu as he started to shuffle around nervously. Do you know who he is or not? Demanded Kigali through narrowed eyes. Mu looked around to see everyone looking at him expectantly, which caused him to sigh before answering the girl's question. Yeah I know him and so does every other person in the Earth Alliance, said Mu. Why don't you just give us a name instead of dragging this whole thing out, said Andrew as he finished his cup of coffee. His name is Captain Naruto Uzumaki and he is the top ace of Earth Alliance, frowned Mu as his eyes became hard. Maru gasped while Andrew got a grim look on his face, but the others still didn't know who he was. Who is he? Asked Kigali confused. His name sounds familiar, said Athrun as he tried to remember where he had heard that name before. Naruto Uzumaki is probably the most dangerous man I have ever faced in battle including you kid, said Andrew with a hard look in his eyes. Kira was surprised by that comment because he had almost killed Andrew and did kill his lover so who could be worse than him. He is responsible for almost all of the Earth Force's victories against ZFT before those new strike dagger mobile suits were put into mass production. I have never seen him in action, but I do know that he is the first natural to be able to pilot a mobile suit to the same level and degree as a coordinator, explained Moreau. I remember hearing my father speak with several council members concerning someone by the name of Uzumaki. They were very worried about his abilities and how he was one of the few naturals who had successfully taken out multiple Jin units, said Lakas surprising Kira and Athrun. I believe the strike was originally meant to have been made for his use, said Mu. 
Have you ever fought besides him? Asked Kira curiously. Yeah once, but the thing was I barely did any fighting and the same goes for the others who were there as well. I have never seen a mobile armor do the things he could do with it, answered Mu as he remembered that particular battle clearly. I fought against him once as well back in the desert when he used a modified Skygrasper to fight. He took out three of my Bu CUEs before sending us a message that he was only passing through and not there to fight, but he would take out anyone else that continued to fire upon him. If I hadn't been there personally and seen what he did I probably would have thought he was too arrogant for his own good, but he has skill in spades, said Andrew as he got another cup of coffee. He doesn't seem like some cold-hearted bastard if he sent you a message like that so why does he work with Azrael? Asked Kigali. I would like to know the answer to that question as well, said Lakis with a slight frown on her beautiful face. Well, if I had to give a reason I would say it is pretty much the same reason that Natarl had for doing things, which was why she always upset. He does it because he is a good soldier and follows the orders he is given, shrugged Mu. He's very suicidal from what I heard and saw firsthand so he may just have a death wish, said Andrew with a shrug of his own. Dominion. Why? Why do you keep sending me visions of my past, thought Naruto as his eyes narrowed in anger. He was supposed to be over what happened, but now he wasn't so sure anymore and it was all because of these damn visions he kept having. They were visions of him when he was happy as he spent time with his friends and teachers. It was something he had took so much time putting behind him because of the pain he felt as he remembered that they had all died just like everyone else he had come to care for. I don't know what you are trying to tell me, but I have accepted I will be forever alone and nothing will change that, thought Naruto as his eyes hardened. His thoughts were interrupted when he sensed someone behind him and turned around to Lieutenant Badrul looking at him curiously before saluting him. Lieutenant, greeted Naruto with a nod before turning to look back up at Wing Zero. Natarl smiled slightly before standing next to the stoic man and looking up at the mobile suit with him. You know even though it causes the deaths of countless lives the mobile suit does have a certain beauty to it, said Natarl as she looked upon Wing Zero. She usually kept such emotions and comments to herself, but she felt so safe around this man despite his cold nature. There was something about him that let her know he wouldn't think any less of her if she wasn't always following orders. It's ironic isn't it that some of the most beautiful things in the world were designed to cause death, replied Naruto. Everyone looked at the ancient buildings and accomplishments of the past with awe and respect, but Naruto never looked at them like that. He knew the true reason behind many of the great structures and how certain accomplishments were made and the truth wasn't pretty. I suppose you are right, conceded Natarl as she glanced at the man out of the corner of her eyes. I wanted to tell you that we are headed for the abandoned colonies at L4 where Lord Azrael believes the Archangel is located along with those two new mobile suits, said Natarl as she broke the silence. I see, I look forward to fighting besides you when the time comes, said Naruto with a small nod of his head. I am afraid that it will be my extreme honor to fight with you sir since you have been in more battles than I have, replied Natarl as she looked up at Naruto. Don't let Azrael dictate what you want to do because he knows absolutely nothing about being in a real battle, said Naruto as he looked down at Natarl before taking his leave. Natarl just watched him go with a contemplative look on her face. Break. Sir, we have reached the L4 colony and we are getting several large readings from inside the colony. One matches the Archangel, said Natarl as the Dominion floated about half mile away from the colony. Perfect, now is our opportunity to capture those mobile suits, smiled Azrael as he couldn't wait until they managed to capture one. Ma'am, we have detected several ZFT ships located on the other side of the colony, said a tech causing Natarl to frown. It seems we have some competition, said Azrael amused. Natarl just glanced at the man before making a decision. We will ignore them unless they make some move against us, but until then we will focus all our attention on the Archangel since that is our main objective, ordered Natarl. Oh look, they even saved us some trouble by coming out to us, laughed Azrael as the Archangel came out of the colony. He was greatly surprised though when Natarl opened a link with them and started to ask for their surrender. It was amusing to say the least as the woman tried to convince the traders to surrender, but ultimately, it proved useless as they sent out those two new mobile suits. Have Captain Uzumaki launch immediately and start loading the wombats, ordered Natarl as she was prepared to take out the Archangel since they wouldn't surrender. That was most amusing but make sure to remind Captain Uzumaki that the goal is to capture one of those mobile suits so make sure he doesn't destroy them both, said Azrael as he sat there with a smug look on his face. I am sure Captain Uzumaki is well aware of his orders, replied Natarl harshly causing Azrael to blink in surprise. Justice and Freedom vs. Wing Zero Remember Kira, 
We have to work together otherwise we might not be able to beat him, said Ithran as he watched the Wing Zero approach them. Yeah, agreed Kira as he started to aim at the approaching mobile suit. No matter what, he wouldn't lose a second time to this mobile suit because he would not fail in protecting his friends. Wing Zero was in its mobile armor form as it started to fire upon the justice and freedom, but both Gundams got out of the way. Zero transformed into his mobile suit form before splitting its buster rifles and unleashing a barrage of shots at each Gundam that was on either side of it. Justice and Freedom started to return fire upon the Zero, which forced it to reconnect its buster rifle before using its incredible speed to weave in and out of each shot. Damn, he is even better than before, cursed Athrun as he sent his Fatem pack at the Wing Zero just as it dodged the shots fired at it from Kira. He then quickly grabbed his beam boomerang and tossed at the spot he predicted Naruto would go to when he dodged his Fatem pack. Wing Zero dodged the Fatem pack just as Athrun knew he would and his beam boomerang was just about to take off its head, but Zero quickly used its shield to knock it off course. Naruto just knocked away the beam boomerang when the freedom came at him from above and he barely drew his own beam saber in time to parry the strike, but grunted in pain when he wasn't to block the kick to his chest. The justice came at him from behind, but the zero managed to turn just in time to dodge the beam strike that would have taken off its shield arm though that was exactly wanted a thrun was hoping he would do. The Fatem pack came speeding out nowhere right at the zero, but Naruto quickly used the machine guns mounted on his shoulders to destroy the pack before it pierced through the chest of his mobile suit. He was still caught in the explosion, which knocked him backwards as several beeping sounds went off in his cockpit to let him know someone was locking onto him. A second later, several beam shots came at him, but he got out of the way just in time before catching the justice that was sneaking up behind him off guard by slamming his shield into its face. Naruto then quickly used his beam saber to take off the justice's left arm, but it managed to move out of the way just in time and only lost its shield in the slice. We had him, cursed a thrun as Kira eyes narrowed in anger. He was about to engage the Zero in close combat when he noticed the Archangel was in trouble and quickly went over to help it out by going into full burst mode and taking out multiple missiles that were heading at it from the Dominion. I will not let you destroy the Archangel, snapped Kira as he went into seed mode. Is it possible he has a Zero system too? Wondered Naruto as he found himself completely on the defensive by the Freedom as the Justice waited for an opening to help. The Zero managed to parry the Beam Saber, but before it could try to overpower the Freedom, it was hit at point black by the blasts of its rail cannons. Naruto groaned in pain as his cockpit started to go on the fritz, but noticed the freedom was almost on top of him while the justice provided cover fire that forced Naruto to dodge rapidly. He couldn't win like this and just like the last time he fought these two he activated the zero system. Kira, yelled a thrun as he saw his friend just barely dodge a counter beam strike from the wing zero, but still lost both plasma cannons on its shoulder. This caused him to snap and go into seed mode. He quickly grabbed his beam boomerang and threw it straight at Wing Zero before charging at it using his twin beam sabers. Naruto was using his machine guns to keep the freedom at a distance, but was forced to duck suddenly as a familiar looking beam boomerang passed through the space is just occupied. Zero quickly did a complete 180 and cross beams with the Justice, but was overpowered as the Justice powered up its thrusters to full blast to push Naruto off balance and into the beam boomerang that was coming at him from behind. The freedom was coming from above with its own beam saber ready to disable the zero once and for all, but Kira's eyes widened in shock when the mobile suit did a backflip in slow motion and watched as it caught the beam boomerang in its right hand. At the peak of its flip, he fired several shots at the justice with its buster rifle before twisting his body and using the momentum from his flip to throw the beam boomerang right at the freedom. Freedom raised its shield to block the attack, but the beam boomerang cut right through it though Kira released the shield at the last second so he didn't lose his mobile suit's arm too. The Zero was about to power up his buster rifle to 75, but stopped when he saw the retreat flares from the Dominion. He noticed that the ORB ship, Kuzanagi, had teamed up with the Archangel and forced the Dominion to retreat as the two enemy warships overpowered it. Naruto quickly transformed into his mobile armor form and headed back to the Dominion. Kira and Athrun just watched the Zero Gundam leave as they both panted heavily as they came down from their seed mode. The Dominion may have been forced to retreat, but both pilots knew they had lost against the Earth Force pilot and were lucky to be alive. There is no way he is a natural, panted Athrun as he came out of his seed mode. Yeah, but I get the feeling he isn't a coordinator either, panted Kira as he came out of his seed mode as well. We have to get back inside the colony and get fixed up because we don't know when we will be needed out here again to face ZAFT or the Earth Forces again, said Athrun as he headed back towards the colony with Kira following right beside him. Break.
Ugh, we almost had them until that annoying ORB ship showed up. I swear that country is like roaches because just when you think you killed them all more start to show up, sighed Azrael in annoyance. It wasn't a complete failure since we did manage to damage the Archangel greatly and Captain Uzumaki also managed to deal several decisive blows to those new mobile suits, said Natarl as she was still in awe of his abilities as she looked over the tapes of his battle against the Justice and Freedom. She had only ever seen Kira fight with such skill before and it was just plain incredible that a natural was able to match the abilities of a coordinator. I suppose so, but I do expect better results next time and it better be soon before ZFT decides to stop sitting around and make its move, warned Azrael. I was impressed with your abilities out there lieutenant, it seems that someone made a wise decision in assigning you to this ship, said Naruto as he entered the bridge and the crew instantly stood up and saluted him including Natarl. The man just nodded his head before telling them to return to their stations. Thank you sir, said Natarl as she kept her face neutral, but inwardly she was beaming to be praised by a veteran like him. Lord Azrael, I do not believe it is possible to capture those two Gundams as you hope for. Their abilities complement each other perfectly even if the pilots don't seem to have much team training because with each battle their coordination gets better, said Naruto as he turned to look at the arrogant man. Then we will have to find a way to split them up won't we? It shouldn't be too hard since you did say their teamwork wasn't that great so I am sure you could use the Zero system to analyze a way to effectively split them up, smirked Azrael. He didn't see the heavy glare Natarl was sending him from the way he was talking down to Naruto like that, but it was doubtful it would have bothered him much even if he did. If you want detailed information on their fighting capabilities then I can supply you with that information right now since the Zero system has fully analyzed their capabilities. The only thing I wouldn't be able to tell you is what they are using as a power source, said Naruto. That is the key to everything though isn't it, because knowing what powers these unique mobile suits is what I truly want to know, smiled Azrael as he rested his head in his hand. Natarl was about to ask him why it mattered so much, but a small glance from Naruto told her to remain silent. I see, then I will see what I can do in learning about what power source those two units are using, said Naruto with a small nod at Natarl before leaving the bridge. Sir, saluted Natarl to Azrael before leaving the bridge to go speak with Naruto. It didn't take her long to catch up with the stoic man and she started to calmly walk next to him. You wish to speak with me lieutenant? Said Naruto as he glanced at the woman. Yes, I was curious as to why you take orders from Lord Azrael when you don't fall under his jurisdiction and it is clear you don't care too much for him, said Natarl with a slight frown because she knew if she had as much freedom as Naruto she wouldn't let someone like Lord Azrael override her own authority. You don't care much for him either from what I can tell yet you still do as you're told, replied Naruto. I don't have a choice, he is my superior, but he is not yours, argued Natarl with a slight narrow of her eyes. Naruto stopped walking and turned to face Natarl with a cold look in his eyes that sent a shiver down his spine. Flashback. Why? Cried Naruto as he cradled the hug of a beautiful girl with smooth silky black hair. Her pale eyes stared up at him lovingly before she coughed up some blood and one could easily tell she was on the verge of death. I wanted to, it was my choice, coughed the girl as life started to fade from her beautiful pale eyes. Hinata-chan, why didn't you just agree to their demands? You didn't have to die, cried Naruto as tears fell down from his eyes in streams. The girl smiled painfully at him as she reached out a hand and wiped away one of his tears, which made him cry harder. I was always told I didn't have a choice that my destiny was already set for me. I truly believed that until I met you and saw how you constantly fought against such things as fate and destiny. I rather die free than be chained to others my whole life. I love you Naruto Kuen, please, never give in to fate and stay free, smiled Hinata before giving him one last beautiful smile as she fell into an eternal slumber. No! Howled Naruto as his eyes bled red and crimson chakra started to surround his body as hate rolled off him in ways. That night was a night no one would ever forget because it was the day Naruto slaughtered every Hyuga from the main branch leaving only Hinata's sister, Hanabi, alive. It was the day where he started to lose faith in humanity and his eyes started to lose the light they were so well known for. End flashback. Natarl watched worried as Naruto gripped his head in pain, but backed up when he seemed to recompose himself before looking at her with a strange look in his eyes. Your life is your own, never let anyone else tell you how to live it, muttered Naruto before leaving a confused Natarl behind. What did he mean by that, thought Natarl as she thought about the words that Naruto had just said to her. Zaft. Damn that boy, he could ruin all my plans, but I won't let him, thought Rao angrily as he flew out of the colony. He had hoped revealing Mu and Kira's true past would have broke the boy, 
but his plan had failed as Mu had protected him before he could kill him. Captain, said Rao as he opened a link with his ship. Yes commander. Replied an older man as he appeared on Rao's screen. I want you to put the girl from the Earth Forces in the escape pod and launch her towards the Earth Forces ship then I want you to engage the Eternal and its allies, ordered Rao to the confusion of the captain. Sir, started the captain, but stopped when Rao yelled at him angrily. Do not question me and do it now, ordered Rao angrily before closing the link. That girl needed to deliver that disc to the Earth Forces otherwise his plans for humanity would fail. Battle. The ZAFT forces were trying to take down the Kuzanagi and Eternal while the Archangel was engaged with the Dominion. They were all at a stalemate at the moment, since the Freedom and Justice were both busy fighting the Wing Zero so they couldn't really help with the escape of their ships. Kira, we need to help our ships get out of here or we are finished, grunted Athrun as he crossed beams with Naruto. Wing Zero was forced to break their stalemate as several blasts passed through the spot it was just in. I know. But if we don't deal with this Gundam first then it will attack the ships, cursed Kira as he dodged several blasts from Zero's own buster rifle. Justice and Freedom were about to continue their attack when a female's voice came in through one of their links that Kira instantly recognized. Kira, someone help me please, I have a key here that will help end the war, yelled Flay in a panic as her escape pod floated through space. A key to end the war. There is no key to end wars, frowned Naruto, but before he could re-engage the justice and freedom, Azrael appeared on his screen. Captain, I want you to recover that pod and bring it to the ship right away. Consider this a direct order to finally destroy those two new mobile suits so long as you get me whoever is in that pod, smirked Azrael before closing the link. Naruto's eyes just narrowed before he activated the zero system as he saw the freedom was headed towards the pod as well. Kira, yelled a thrun as he saw his friend speed towards the spot but didn't get a chance to help him when Zero used his moment of distraction to cut off his left arm and kick him away into the distance. Kira heard his friend's scream of pain and turned around to see the Zero heading straight for him after having taken care of the justice. Kira was still so worried about Flay that his movements were sloppy and Zero ducked under his beam strike before taking off his right hand in one clean swipe. The freedom was like a sitting duck as Zero raised its shield arm and fired a shot at point-blank range that took off freedom's head. Ah! Screamed Kira as his cockpit went haywire while the Zero sped off and picked up Flay's escape pod. His eyes widened in horror as he realized the Zero was heading back to the Dominion with a pod and was about to give chase, but was restrained by the Justice's good arm. No Kira, we are in no condition to give chase, yelled Athrun as he held his hysterical friend back. Kira just started to scream in anger before slamming his hands down as tears brimmed his eyes. He had once again failed to protect a friend and now she was in the hands of the enemy. The Eternal and Kuzanagi had managed to break through the ZAFT forces by destroying their main ship. The Dominion had pulled back once Naruto had returned the escape pod to the ship so the Archangel soon followed its fellow ships off into space. There was only one person truly happy with the outcome of this battle and that was Commander Rao, as he knew now nothing could stop his plans for humanity. Everything would come to an end soon now that the Earth forces had captured the girl. Lunar Base Look at this. This is proof that those damn coordinators have breached the treaty not to use nuclear technology, smiled Azrael as he showed them the date on the file he had taken off the girl Flay. That foolish girl had truly given him the key to end this war because with this data on Enjammers he would finally be able to convince these foolish people to use nukes against the plants. Hmm, we could use this technology to fix the nuclear problem on the planet while at the same time gathering more resentment towards ZFT, said a general causing Azrael to grit his teeth in anger. It was true that ever since ZFT launched millions of those N-jammers into the Earth's surface radio problems as long as many other problems had occurred with the economy. This technology could fix all that, but Azrael could care less about that because he just wanted to nuke the hell out of the coordinators. No, don't you see we could end this war right now. If we attack them, using nukes right now, they will be totally defenseless and we can crush them in one swift blow. We didn't build all those nukes so that they could sit there and gather dust so let's use them already, growled Azrael angrily as his eyes burned with an insane glint in them. Many of the other generals did like the idea of ending this war once and for all, which caused the majority to vote on Azrael's plan. Very well, I will let you come up with the plan on how you plan to finish this war, sighed the president before calling an end to the meeting. Nothing could wipe the large smile off Azrael's face as he would finally get rid of the coordinators once and for all, for their pure and blue world. Break. Naruto was once again standing before his Gundam the Wing Zero as many thoughts crossed his mind. 
He had been thinking a lot about Natarl Bajrul and the way she reminded him of Hanabi and Hinata. The woman came from a very strict military family, which was easily seen by the way she followed orders to the book going so far that she ignores her own emotions on things. When he looked into her eyes, he could see the inner turmoil that she suffered on a daily basis and it pained him for some reason. It was just too eerie how much she reminded him of the Hyuga sisters and every time he was near her, he felt this urge to protect her. These were emotions he had kept locked up for many centuries so that he wouldn't have to deal with the pain of the past, but ever since getting Wing Zero they had been resurfacing again. He knew he had to stop getting so close to that woman because it would only cause him pain in the long run when she died and he continued to live. If only the pilots of the justice and freedom were more experienced then maybe he would get his wish to finally die, but like all other great warriors he faced, they just didn't have enough experience fighting compared to him. He did respect their abilities though because they were able to keep up with him even when he had the zero system activated, but they were too caring of those around them. This allowed them to get distracted during battle and those distractions had been costing them their fights against him. Ironic, he remembered when he used to care about what happened around him, but now he could care less or that is what he told himself. I wonder what you all would say if you saw me now. Would you be disappointed with me and could you forgive me for what I have become? thought Naruto as he stared up at Wing Zero as if it held the answers he sought. His thoughts were interrupted when he sensed someone was spying and glanced over to the corner of the hangar to see a familiar girl watching him from behind one of the pillars. He recognized the girl as the one that was in the escape pod and provided Azrael with that file, which contained complete data on the justice and freedom. Her name was Flay if he remember correctly and it was almost amusing that she thought she could remain hidden with that blinding reddish-pink hair of hers. It almost reminded him of when he used to love to wear the color orange when he was younger, but he quickly wiped those thoughts from his mind. The girl wasn't doing any harm so he decided to just ignore her and return to looking up at his Gundam. Elsewhere. So the meteor system is finally complete is it? Said Andrew as he sipped his coffee. Yeah, but it does us little good since we won't exactly be able to use it while we are still hiding, sighed Athrun as he crossed his arms across his chest. Do we know what the Earth Forces and ZAFT have been up to lately? Asked Kira curiously. No, all we know that is Earth has been gathering almost 75 of their remaining forces to their lunar base, replied Andrew as he leaned back in his chair. I wonder what they are planning, said Kigali with a small frown. If you ask me I would say they are planning for a direct attack on the plants, but even they won't be able to accomplish that unless they have some way to get past ZAFT defensive base, offered Mu causing many to think about what he said. Let us hope that whatever they have planned that we will be able to interfere before it creates more death and destruction, said Leica softly. Kira just smiled slightly before putting a hand on the beautiful pink-haired girl's shoulders to show he agreed with her. Dominion. Natarl was up late as usual going over some data log as she sat in her chair on the bridge of the Dominion. She had been told that she would be leading an assault on Zaft's space fortress Boaz. It had surprised her greatly when she had learned of this and not because she would be leading the assault but because they were attacking Boaz. That base had yet to be damaged severely in any Earth Force assault and Natarl seriously doubted that they would have any better success. They just didn't have the manpower to lead a successful assault against Boaz, which is why it was called a space fortress. You are up late, said a familiar voice that caused Natarl to jump in surprise. She turned around to see Naruto had entered the bridge and floated over to her as she tried to calm down her nerves. Forgive me, I didn't mean to surprise you, said Naruto sincerely. Natarl just waved it off before she saluted the man since he did still technically outrank her. It is no problem sir, I was just going over some possible scenarios for when we reach Boaz in a few days, replied Natarl before clearing her monitor. I take it you don't know then? Said Naruto causing the woman to look at him curiously. I am afraid I do not know what you are talking about sir, said Natarl as she looked up into his piercing blue eyes. Lord Azrael has convinced the Earth Alliance forces to authorize the use of nukes using the new Enjammer technology ZFT has created. He has also convinced them to allow me to use the full power of Wing Zero in order to take out the base at Boaz so they can use every nuke against the plants, said Naruto. Natarl's eyes widened in horror as she could tell Naruto was being dead serious. It wasn't like her to question her superiors, but was it really necessary to go this far and use nukes against civilians just to win a war? Wait a minute, you said you were allowed to use your Gundam's full power? What exactly do you mean by that? Asked Natarl as she tried to keep her mind off the nukes for a moment. The Calamity and Raider will be deployed to clear the way of all enemy mobile suits so that I can use the full power of Zero's Buster Rifle to completely destroy Boaz. 
In two days, Boaz will cease to exist, said Naruto as he refused to meet the woman's eyes before taking his leave of the bridge. Hopefully, when she saw him destroy Boaz she would start to hate him instead of still respecting him like she did now. Maybe then, it would be easier to ignore her presence if she wanted nothing to do with him. Break. Now remember, it will be up to you two to clear the way so that Captain Uzumaki can destroy Boaz and if there is anything left several mobile armors packed with nukes can destroy what is left, smiled Azrael. Clotho and Orga both seemed happy that they would get to destroy more ZFT soldiers, but were both glaring at Naruto with hate from out of the corner of their eyes. He was the one who had killed Shani and though none of them really got along, he was still their teammate. Naruto didn't even bother acknowledging they existed, which caused them even more anger, but knew better than to attack the man because then they would be denied the drugs that kept them from feeling any painful side effects of their unnatural enhancements. Captain Uzumaki, I expect that you won't have any problems with testing out the true power of that buster rifle now will you? Smiled Azrael before taking a step back reflexively as Naruto cold eyes turned to look in his own. Naruto didn't say anything, but just nodded his head before taking his leave of the man. This caused Azrael to glare at Naruto because he still hated how the man showed him no respect. It didn't matter though, because once they had finally got rid of those damn coordinators he would then deal with Captain Uzumaki or that is what he thought. Go get ready, we have a base to destroy, laughed Azrael before heading towards the bridge. Clotho and Orga just smirked before heading to their own mobile suits. Council of ZFT slash plants. Chairman, Boas has reported that a large number of Earth forces have headed towards them, said a soldier. Those foolish naturals and their damn arrogance to think that their superior numbers will overcome us, scowled Chairman Zala as he pulled up the screen and watched as Boas deployed its own forces. It seems they are using some new type of mobile suits, said Azalea Jewel, mother of Azak Jewel, the pilot of the dual Gundam. It doesn't matter, Boaz is a fortress and will not fall to those inferior naturals, said Chairman Zala confidently. Battle of Boaz. These coordinators are pathetic, and I was hoping for a challenge, laughed Orga as he used his cannons to take out multiple ZFT mobile suits. This is too easy, smiled Clotho as he used his mace to take out two enemy mobile suits before using his beam rifle to shoot down another three. The only one who wasn't bragging about their abilities or taking joy in killing a bunch of ZFT forces was Naruto. He had taken out the same if not more mobile suits than both the Raider and Calamity, but knew his real job had yet to come. It was almost disgusting to think about because he would be annihilating an entire base in one shot. This is what made him realize that he truly had become nothing more than a monster and yet he couldn't seem to care. There was a small clench of his heart, but for the most part, he felt nothing. He only hoped that after he did this that ZFT would hate him so much they would send everything they had after him and not stop until they succeeded in killing him for what he was going to do. In the big picture, it didn't matter whether he fired the shot or not because if he didn't fire then Azrael would just launch the nukes against the base. With that final thought, Naruto grabbed his buster rifle with both hands and took aim at the space fortress. The ZFT, Earth Forces, and the three ships that had created an alliance all watched with mixed reactions as Wing Zero fired at Boaz. The beam from his buster rifle passed right through the center of the large space fortress before it started to explode from the inside out. Naruto just watched emotionlessly as Boaz as exploded in a shower of debris and didn't even realize that the armor on Wing Zero had started to take on a reddish tint. Boaz had been completely destroyed and hundreds of soldiers of ZAFT had lost their life all because of one machine. Naruto wish was granted, because once news got out that he had destroyed Boaz in a single shot, he had become the most hated man in all of the plants and ZAFT. They would not be satisfied until he and Wing Zero were destroyed then burned in hell for what they did. Three Ship Alliance, Kuzanagi, Eternal, and Archangel. It can't be possible, there is no way one mobile suit can be that powerful, said Kigali in disbelief, as she still couldn't believe it what happened to Boas. That isn't the only thing we have to worry about, because we just intercepted a message from ZAFT saying that they also detected nuclear energy aboard all of the carriers. This means even if Naruto hadn't destroyed Boas that they would have just launched nukes instead, said Andrew with a grim expression on his face. We need to head to the plants because no doubt that is where they will head to next now that Boaz is gone, frowned Lakus with a worried look in her eyes because she had hoped something like this wouldn't happen. Athrun and I will deal with the nukes before we go after that mobile suit, said Kira with a hard look in his eyes. Kira, said Lakus with a worried look in her eyes because she didn't want to see Kira go up against such an enemy for fear of him losing his life. Don't worry Lakus, this time we will definitely end this war, smiled Kira as he looked at the beautiful girl with a reassuring look in his eyes. 
Break. Does this change mean that I truly am becoming nothing but a monster? Are you starting to give up on me already Wing Zero? Thought Naruto as he stared at Wing Zero and noticed some of the armor had turned crimson red. He could still remember the last vision he had received, which were the cries of hundreds of people just before they were silenced forever. The vision was the sounds of Boaz just before it exploded and deep down it was tearing him apart even if he kept a neutral expression on his face. It had taken two thousands years, but finally he was becoming what the villagers had called him since he was a little kid. A demon that merely existed to take the lives of all those in its path and leave no survivors. Naruto had truly become a fallen angel and he was losing what little remained of his wings if the slow transformation of his Gundam was any sign. Captain Uzumaki, said a familiar voice causing Naruto to turn around and stare into the beautiful violet eyes of Lieutenant Bajirol. Lieutenant is there something I can do for you? Asked Naruto as he turned to face the woman who now looked at him differently since he destroyed Boaz. I have come to tell you that we will be arriving at the plant soon, sir, answered Natarl as she forced herself to look into his eyes. She still couldn't believe that his Gundam contained such power and that he willingly used it to destroy an entire space fortress in one attack. It made her start to question if she was truly doing the right thing by following orders without questioning the morality of them. HN, I take it Lord Azrael wishes to finally finish this war by launching nukes at the plants, said Naruto knowingly. Yes sir, but he has also said that you will be leading the strike, sir, replied Natarl as she glanced at the ground. No, said Naruto causing Natarl to look up at him in surprise. What did he mean by no? Sir? Asked Natarl confused. Tell Lord Azrael that destroying a military base is one thing, but I will not use Wing Zero's power on defenseless civilians whether they are coordinators or not. I have not fallen that far, said Naruto as he mumbled the last part before turning to look at Wing Zero. Natarl's eyes widened in disbelief because she couldn't believe that he would be disregarding a direct order not just from Lord Azrael, but his actual superiors since the president had sanctioned this mission. Maybe he wasn't as cruel as she thought him to be and her faith in the military started to falter even more so now. If he or any others have a problem with this then send them directly to me and I will deal with them, said Naruto before brushing past Natarl and making his way out of the hangar. Natarl just watched him go with a confused look in her eyes and many conflicting thoughts in her head. Everything was starting to change and for once, she was confused if she was doing the right thing. Plants Chairman Zala, we have detected multiple earth forces approaching the plants, said a soldier as he saluted the man. It would appear the Earth Force's plans to use their nuclear weapons and that new mobile suit to end this war permanently, said Rao as he kept a neutral look on his face, but inside he was grinning insanely. His plan for all humanity to be annihilated was about to come about and all that was left was for Chairman Zala to activate the Genesis. Those arrogant fools, it is time to activate the Genesis and show them exactly how inferior to us they are, growled Chairman Zala causing a smile to slowly form on Rao's face. I will deploy all our forces to protect the plants while you prepare the genesis, said Azalea Jewel before taking her leave of the chairman. I shall get going as well, bowed Rao. Soon, all those inferior naturals will be gone never to bother us again, said Chairman Zala as he headed to his personal ship where it would take him to genesis. Dominion. Now listen you two, once the nukes are launched and those coordinators are taken care of I want you both to destroy that annoying Uzumaki, demanded Azrael as he spoke with Clotho and Orga. The leader of Blue Cosmos was pissed because Naruto had refused to obey his orders and use Wing Zero's power to wipe out the plants. He was going to teach that arrogant captain that no one denied him what he wanted. Orga and Clotho started to smirk because they had been itching for a good fight and had been wanting to kill that man for quite some time. Their arrogance and their own abilities wouldn't allow them to accept anyone could be better at piloting a mobile suit than them, which is why they were happy to get the chance to kill Naruto. It would be the perfect chance to prove they were better than that stoic man who never bothered to acknowledge their existence. Can we use any means necessary to kill him? Asked Orga with a glint in his eyes. Yes, but make sure you do after the nukes are launched that way no one will notice a single mobile being destroyed because their attention will be focused on the destruction of the plants, smiled Azrael. Sounds good to me, smirked Clotho, as he couldn't wait to have some revenge against the man who had humiliated him and killed Shunny. The three men were so wrapped up in what they were discussing that they didn't notice that their whole conversation had been overheard. The person quickly headed to the hangar where they knew Captain Uzumaki was at to warn him of the danger he was in. It didn't take the person long to find Naruto as he was staring up at his Gundam like he usually was doing during the day. No one really understood why he spent most of his time staring at his mobile suit, and they probably never would because no one was brave enough to dare interrupt the man. 
Captain Uzumaki, said a female voice causing the said man to turn his head to look at the girl. Yes, Ms. Alster. Replied Naruto as he stared at the girl through emotionless blue eyes that made the girl shift her feet nervously. It's Flay, and I heard something that I think you should know, said Flay as she tried to remain calm, but Naruto's eyes made her nervous because it was like he was staring directly into her soul. What is it? Asked Naruto though he really didn't care since he doubted it was that important. I heard that man, the leader of Blue Cosmos speaking with two pilots and he was telling them to kill you once they launched the nukes at the plants, said Flay but was surprised when Naruto didn't even look in the least bit bothered by this knowledge. I see was there anything else? Replied Naruto as he turned to look back up at his Gundam. Aren't you worried? Argued Flay as she looked at the man in disbelief. No, but it might be wise to keep this knowledge to yourself since you could be targeted if someone found out you knew what you know, warned Naruto before taking his leave of the girl to prepare for the final battle. Second Battle of Jachindu Ha, huh, die you weak bastards, yelled Clotho as he took out several jin with a large grin on his face. Remember the plan idiot, smirked Orga as he used his plasma cannons to take out multiple ZFT mobile suits. Yeah, yeah I know, replied Clotho as he glanced at their target out of their corner of his eyes. Not too far away from them, Wing Zero was being attacked by a huge amount of ZFT mobile suits, but was easily destroying them all. It seemed they all wanted the chance to take out the man responsible for destroying Boaz, but if only they knew how futile their attempts were. The duel, thought Naruto before using his shield to block several missiles from the stolen Gundam. You bastard, you will pay for what you did to Boaz, yelled Azak as he engaged Wing Zero as his eyes burned with hate. HN, thought Naruto unimpressed at the duel's abilities as he easily evaded the shots fired at him from the duel. Izak was growling in anger because he couldn't believe how fast the mobile suit that he was fighting was and every time it looked like he had it, it would get out of the way just in time. Damn it, cursed Azak as he barely dodged out of the way in time before he was cut in half from a beam saber strike, but couldn't evade the kick to the chest that sent him sailing backwards. Wing Zero took the moment it had to draw its buster rifle and took aim at the two ZFT warships in the distance. Izak saw what was happening and was about to yell out a warning, but it was too late as he watched Wing Zero fire its buster rifle. The two ZFT ships were completely obliterated. Bastard, you'll pay for that, growled Azak but before he could head toward Wing Zero his eyes widened in horror as he saw multiple nukes being launched at the plants. No, everyone follow me and target those missiles. We can't even let one hit the plants, yelled Azak in a panic as he directed the ZFT forces over to the nukes that had been launched at the plants. He and many others tried their best to take them out, but there was just too many. Now Orga, yelled Clotho as he turned around to go after the Zero Gundam, but both pilots blinked in confusion when they couldn't find it. Where the hell did it go? Growled Orga. His question was answered a second later, a loud beeping sound went off, and both pilots turned around to see Wing Zero about 20 feet behind them with its buster rifle pointed right at them. Their eyes widened in horror as Zero fired at them. Ah! Screamed Orga while Clotho was completely obliterated in the blast to the point there was nothing left of his Gundam. The Calamity managed to escape death, but its right arm was gone and its thrusters had been damaged. Surrender or you will suffer the same fate as your friend, said Naruto as he opened a link with the Calamity after putting away his buster rifle. You bastard, I will kill you, yelled Orga as his eyes burned in rage before he started to fire upon the Zero recklessly. Naruto just shook his head at the insane pilot as he easily weaved in and out of his shots as he slowly closed the distance between the two of them. The Calamity was just too heavily loaded with artillery that it couldn't keep up with Zero's superior speed and maneuverability. In a matter of moments, Naruto was right in front of the Calamity and Orga didn't even get the chance to scream as a beam saber cut his Gundam in half. To an outside viewer, it looked as if Wing Zero hadn't even moved its arm as it passed right by the Calamity in a blur. Wing Zero had its back turned to the Calamity as the Gundam slowly fell in half before exploding in a large explosion. Naruto didn't even bother to look back at the Calamity and went to see how the nuclear strike went. He noticed that all the plants were still there, which confused him because there is no way ZFT could have stopped all those nukes on their own. It was something he didn't get to think too long on when a beeping sound went off and he barely dodged out of the way in time to avoid being cut in half by the largest beam sword he had ever seen. The justice, thought Naruto as he turned to face his new opponent and noticed that it had some strange pack on its back. His eyes widened in realization as it must have been with these new packs that the freedom and justice were capable of destroying all the nukes. 
Perhaps, now they had the power to beat him and give him the eternal darkness he sought so much. Athrun quickly used the meteor to lock in on Naruto before firing a huge amount of missiles at him. Naruto quickly activated his zero system and turned his thrusters on at full blasts as he attempted to avoid all the missiles. There were just too many though and he took several direct hits, but nothing that would slow him down for long. Wing Zero's armor was tougher than any other Gundam, which meant it could take considerably more damage without its capabilities suffering from it. His Gundam's armor is incredible if it could withstand several direct hits like that, cursed Athrun as he activated the beam sabers on the meteor and tried to take out the Zero with them. Your power is truly impressive with that pack on, but what good is all that power if you can't hit anything with it, said Naruto with disappointment clearly in his eyes. The meteor was designed for taking out multiple enemies and increasing the speed at which the justice or freedom could travel long distance, but in close combat, it was merely a burden as Athrun was learning. The best he was able to do was keep Naruto at a distance with his beam sabers, but he was nowhere close to landing a blow on him. It wouldn't be long before the Zero Gundam got within his guard and Athrun knew it. Naruto and Athrun were about to clash again, when a loud beeping sound filled their cockpits and Izak came yelling at the justice over the international frequency. Freedom, justice get out of there now. They are going to fire the Genesis, yelled Azak as he ordered all ZFT forces to pull back. Less than a few seconds later, a large blast came from about mile or so away from then and was heading straight for them and the Earth forces behind the Zero. Athrun's eyes widened in horror as he realized he wouldn't be able to maneuver out of the way in time and would be annihilated in the blast. He gasped in shock and disbelief when he felt something quickly destroy the meteor pack before grabbing him and carrying him safely out of the blast seconds before it consumed him. Why? Gasped Athrun as he looked upon Wing Zero, which was responsible for saving his life. He watched as Wing Zero released him then calmly floated in front of him. The two Gundams stood staring at each other before Wing Zero flew off in the distance to check on its forces. Athrun, we need to destroy that weapon before it can be fired again said Kira as he appeared on his friend's monitor. Athrun snapped out of his stupor and looked down at his friend. I'll do it, you just continue to fight out here while I take care of that thing, replied Athrun as his eyes narrowed. He knew it was his father that had fired that monstrous weapon and he was going to be the one to stop it. Right, agreed Kira before closing the link. Athrun glanced one more time in the direction of which the Zero Gundam took off before heading off towards Genesis. Naruto was heading back to the Dominion because it was clear that the Earth forces were going to lose this battle and war if they didn't retreat. He still didn't know why he had saved the Justice from being destroyed. Something about the way the Justice and Freedom fought seemed so familiar that he couldn't just let them be destroyed so carelessly. They like him, deserved to die in a battle like a true warrior, and not by some random blast. His thoughts were interrupted though when the Zero System alerted him to several approaching enemies, which caused Naruto to quickly raise his shield to block a blast coming from a familiar-looking Dragoon system. Seconds later, several Dragoons surrounded him and started to fire upon him with deadly accuracy, but he was able to predict their patterns and destroy two of them before they flew towards a Gundam he had never seen. Impressive, it seems you are truly as good as they say, but I can't allow your existence to remain anymore, smirked Rao as the Dragoons attached to the pack on the back of his Providence Gundam. I have heard of you as well Commander Rao Lucreset, said Naruto calmly as he floated in front of the Gundam. Haha, <laughs> then you knows that I will not fail in killing you and that damn boy in order to ensure my plans for humanity succeed, laughed Rao as he fired his beam rifle along with the five dragoons on his back at Naruto. Wing Zero turned its thrusters on to full blast and dodged to the side to avoid being hit before returning fire with its own buster rifle. The Providence Gundam quickly evaded the blasts and released its dragoons that started to attack Naruto to keep him on the defensive. HN, thought Naruto as he weaved in and out of the dragoons that were giving him no time to return fire. If weren't for the fact that he had the Zero System activated and his own superb spatial awareness skills, he probably would have lost an arm or leg by now because of the onslaught. This Providence Gundam was in a league of its own especially with a pilot like Rao in command of it. Give it up, there is no way you can match my Gundam's power, laughed Rao as he took aim upon Naruto with his beam rifle. We shall see, replied Naruto as his eyes narrowed as he came up with a plan to destroy the Dragoons, but right before he could implement it he received a vision from Wing Zero that made his eyes widen in horror. No, not again, pleaded Naruto as he slammed his hands into the council while his Gundam shook from being hit by several beams. He had just been sent a vision of Lieutenant Badgerul being killed by Lord Azrael because she refused to fire upon the Archangel. 
She died with a smile on her face just like Hinata because she finally chose to make her own decisions and not do as others tell her. Goodbye, grinned Rao as he had all his dragoons return to him as he prepared to destroy Wing Zero in one final blast. Just as he was about to fire upon the immobile Gundam, a bright light exploded from the Gundam and temporarily blinded him. When he was finally able to see again he noticed that Wing Zero was nowhere in sight. He cursed, but decided to go after the freedom and then after he had dealt with that boy he would find Wing Zero and make sure it couldn't escape him a second time. That's it for part 1. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.